now. Back in England, the colonial rebellion becomes a national preoccupation. Over the next three years, Parliament keeps trying to impose its authority with new laws and new taxes. As each new law inflames the rebellion, it ends up getting repealed. Except for one, a tax on tea. The principle involved is that Parliament is sovereign, it can pass laws on whatever it wants. So we're going to just keep this one in place, just because, to assert the fact that we can do this. The Tea Act puts only a three-penny tax per pound on the drink of choice for most Americans. It's hardly a burden, but in the current climate, a three-penny tax still equals oppression. It's all that militant patriots need to strike another blow against the empire. Feathers and coal dust are their weapons. On December 16th, 1773, the Sons of Liberty enlist 50 men to darken their faces, stick feathers in their hair, and arm themselves with hatchets in a bad impersonation of Mohawk Indians. 5,000 people follow them down to Boston Harbor and watch as they climb aboard a merchant ship loaded with tea from England. With British soldiers absent since the Boston Massacre, there is no one to stop them. 342 crates of tea worth 10,000 British pounds are cast overboard. This wanton act of sabotage, which becomes known as the Boston Tea Party, will soon push the two sides to the brink of war. The British reaction was disgust and outrage. From a British point of view, you had an entire colony running amok. And the British government, after the Tea Act, frankly said, we've had enough. We've had enough of Massachusetts. And we're going to clamp down on them. And we're going to make Massachusetts an example of what happens if you defy the authority of Parliament. At that very same time, the British discover yet another outrage committed by an American, someone they thought they could trust. Benjamin Franklin. 